I'm afraid of doing deliverance because when I do deliverance, demons attack me. It's one of the most asked questions and one of the reasons why many people don't want to do deliverance because they're afraid of all the repercussions when you do deliverance. And so I will answer that in just a moment. But before I do that, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and then like this video. Engage with me in the comments below and click on the bell so you can be notified anytime we go live or when we upload new videos. When it comes to ministry of deliverance, there's a very traditional teaching and it's also, I believe, a misconception that breeds fear. Jesus said one time that the tradition of man made the word of God of no effect. And I believe this is one of those traditions that I have witnessed in the ministry of deliverance that caused more damage and it's used by the enemy to infiltrate fear in the people of God and people become self-fulfilling prophecies or they begin to see the fulfillment of these ideas that they have when they encounter deliverance ministry or they begin to do deliverance and then they get attacked. Now, first and foremost, I want to tell you something that deliverance ministry, Jesus told us to do it the same way he told us to make disciples, to heal the sick and he told us also to love our neighbors and so it's in obedience to the Lord. We don't do deliverance because we, you know, love demons or manifestations. We do deliverance because it's what the Lord told us to do. It's part of our great commission. It's part of our assignment on this earth to see His kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven and to see Jesus' spiritual kingdom create a, uh, a clash with the kingdom of darkness. He came to destroy the works of the devil and we are the branch. We have no luxury of doing anything else but to continue the ministry of Jesus Christ on this earth. With that said, a lot of times what happens is that in deliverance you can experience some physical attacks during deliverance. I've had moments where certain things uh, happen where, you know, I was hit, not uh, too heavily, or where uh, ushers, you know, had one of the ribs got bruised or camera was broken because the demon really manifested very powerful or very strongly. And I had situations in my life also where after deliverance or a person was, was not fully delivered and I, had to, I took him home and then, um, you know, there were certain things started to happen in the car. Some of you read my story or you heard my stories and the person wanted to take their own life and I was there by myself and really relied on the grace and the power of the name of Jesus and commanded the demon to stop and the demon couldn't proceed with his plans. Every weapon formed against me couldn't prosper as the scripture says. And so now, concerning after you finish doing deliverance on somebody or you're involved in deliverance ministry, people in Christianity, and I've heard this from a lot of different people, are afraid and they expect assaults and attacks upon themselves because they were doing ministry. Now, I understand if you ever were involved in a street fight, you know, and you went and you punched somebody, you attacked somebody, you know, there's high chance these people are going to come and attack you. And so we use the idea of a street fight into the ministry of deliverance. We bring that into ministry of deliverance. But I don't want, I want you to see where was the time when Jesus cast out demons, a legion of demons. He cast out a spirit of infirmity. He cast out the mute and dumb spirit. He cast out a demon out of a little boy who had epilepsy. Jesus cast out a demon out of a man in the temple. We don't see afterwards Jesus having a headache, an accident, tripping over a stone. Some kind of a thing falls on him from a second story building and crushes, you know, his skull or some kind of a, these bizarre attacks as a repercussions. And you may say, well, Jesus was the son of God. True. But nowhere did he warn his disciples about the dangers of doing the ministry of deliverance and threatening them or warning them about the repercussions or really asking them to be cautious because ministry of deliverance is so dangerous. We don't see that in the Bible. I believe that doing deliverance is the safest thing you can do. It's as safe as praying for the sick. It's as safe as giving to the poor. It's as safe as preaching the gospel. Now, will we encounter certain persecutions from people? Yeah. A lot of times it's from Christians. A lot of times it's from other people. Like when Paul cast out a demon, you know, people got mad. You know, you may say, oh, the devil got outraged. Not really. It was the people. Because Paul removed the spirit of divination out of a girl who was literally was on the payroll of these businesses and was helping them to grow their businesses. In fact, I met a person this week who through all kinds of demonic spirits, she grew her business to 
a hundred million dollars. Yes, you heard me correct. Very influential person on YouTube. And so, and it's a lot of people, they use demons to grow their finances and spirit of divination helped this woman to disclose certain secrets that people got rich from. So Paul casts out the demon and businessmen got offended and they threw him in jail. They pretty much threw a lawsuit against him. And so ministry of deliverance can experience natural consequences and mainly from people. And a lot of times it's from Christians who are going to be attacking ministry of deliverance. What about demons themselves? I don't want you to live in fear of casting out of demons that demons will come back and attack you. And this is why. Because in the Bible, Luke chapter 10 verse 19, it says, Behold, I give you the authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And watch this. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now that's what Jesus said. That's not what some kind of a grandpa said in the village. That's not what uh, this guy casts out so many demons and he warned me. That's great. That's awesome. I'm pretty sure this guy is a great guy, but I'm talking about Jesus right now. These words are in red in your Bible. That means that Jesus holds the authority on the issue of deliverance because Jesus commissions us to deliver us, to deliver the captives. Now, watch this. This instruction is given to the 70 disciples. I call them the nameless disciples. Jesus referred to them as babes when they came back and said, Demons, obey us in your name. They came back excited that demons are obeying them in the name of Jesus. We don't know their names. We know there's a large group of them. We know that they were chosen after the 12. So like if we could use the human, you know, level right now, we would say they're not as important as the 12. They were called babes. They were very young in this ministry, but they had authority and they already were successful. And when they came back, Jesus told them, don't rejoice that demons are obeying you. He says, I want you to rejoice that your names are written in the book of life. And then he adds this thing. He says, I saw Satan fall like lightning. Now we think that this is describing probably when Satan fell from heaven. I think this is describing every time they were going and doing deliverance. Jesus said, I saw Satan fall again and again and again when you deliver the demonized people. And then he says, I give you authority over all the power of the enemy. And then you would think Jesus would say, you know what, guys, you're not very mature. You still don't have a lot of scriptures. Um, you should be very careful about doing the ministry of deliverance. That's not for everybody. Like, be, be very, very cautious. I want to warn you. There's going to be consequences. There's going to be repercussions, accidents, headaches, fevers, and like marriage problems. And spirits will come and torment you at night. So I want you to be very, very careful. Ministry of deliverance is for the elite. Jesus doesn't say that. He says, and nothing by any means. You know what nothing means in Greek? Nothing. You know what that means in Hebrew? Nothing. Nothing by any means shall hurt you. What does that mean? Does that mean that Satan will not throw an assault after you drive out demons? Oh, of course he will. You can, you can be sure of that. So why will it not hurt you? Because when you believe in what Jesus said, you're wearing an armor of God. And part of that armor is faith. You know what faith does? It's a shield. It, the arrows come and hit the shield and bounce back. Faith in what? In who? In what Jesus said. And so you have to go and doing, in doing ministry deliverance, throw away the tradition. Tradition? When you believe tradition, that if you do deliverance, you have to expect attacks. And then you use these verses like, look, Jesus went and he was baptized, then he was attacked. Elijah went and killed the prophets of Baal and he was attacked. And then we use that to say, look, Israel, you know, came out of Egypt and then they were attacked. And we use all these verses and they sound super spiritual. After great revival comes great trials. And so we apply that to the ministry of deliverance. And this is the crazy part that I've seen. People who believe that always have stories of how that is the truth in their life. And those experiences, they confirm their belief. Even though that belief is not based on the scripture. So you may say, how does that work? Because according to your faith, a lot of times that's how it works. You throw away the word of God and you put on tradition. Tradition is not bad, don't get me wrong. But if you want to last in a ministry of deliverance, you have to trust Jesus, not tradition. 
We used to do that ourselves. Before each conference, specific prayers of covering, of covering ourselves with the blood. Because these witches will come and penetrate us. It will cause accidents. And then after conferences, you know, we would all get sick. Get attacked, like literally uh, accidents. Just bad stuff would happen. And of course, to us, there was a sign that we, we really, uh, you know, caused damage to the kingdom of darkness and he's attacking us. And then one day, you know, the Lord dealt with my heart and he said, what if that's not true? And I was confronted with this verse and I'm realizing that I don't believe this, this promise. And so I started to teach our team to do the opposite. And I said, listen, that doesn't mean that after conference, of course you can get sick. A lot of times you're very tired or after deliverance service, you know, you can be really tired. You can lose your voice and, and everything. That's fine. That's normal. Plus, just because, you know, you did deliverance, it doesn't mean that normal things of life will not happen. Like in, you, you're never going to get a flat tire or you're never going to get this or that. And so, I mean, there's normal things that happen in life. But expecting these extra crazy attacks because you do deliverance and because you're involved in deliverance is not scriptural. Don't expect attacks expect God's favor. Why? Because you're doing God's will. Expect what Jesus said. No weapon formed against you shall prosper and nothing by any means shall hurt you. I started to teach our team and today we don't see that. I'm not saying that we're exempt from trouble. Of course not. We're not exempt from suffering. We're not exempt from criticisms. We're not exempt from some people not being happy about deliverance. We're not exempt from that. That's always been there and it's, it's always going to continue. But these attacks that we always experienced before, we don't experience. And today, if we would have a, like, we just came from Race to Deliver a few days ago, and I think there was more deliverances taking place in that one weekend that we did before, like in 10 years. You know, and praise God, everybody's doing good, and we're serving God, we're praising, walking in the joy of the Lord. We don't rejoice the demons obey us, but nor do we expect them to come back and hit me up with like nightmare or sexual dreams or some kind of, a, you know, choking me at night or anything of that, because we have to hold the shield of faith. And the shield of faith is not me constantly praying, Lord, 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 protect me, Lord, protect me. You know, if you're praying that, I wonder if you really believe what he said. So what do we do? We praise him. We praise him that God's word is true. I praise him that Jesus' protection covers me. And I don't have to even pray for it. I just praise him. I just thank him. And I walk with this expectation. Nothing, by no means, shall hurt me when I do what Jesus called me to do. So please throw away tradition and accept the word of Jesus Christ and walk like Jesus did, full of joy, rejoicing in your authority and rejoicing in what God is doing through you. I want to encourage you to continue ministry of deliverance. Maybe you stopped. Perhaps you were poisoned with these teachings and the enemy used it to stop you from, you know, driving him out, from resisting him. And you live with this phobia and fear and you call that the fear of God and you call that being serious about spiritual warfare. But in reality, do you really trust him? I want to invite you to trust in what Jesus said. Perhaps you made the word of God of no effect because of your tradition. God's word is so powerful, but you got to trust it. And this shield of faith, trust in God's word, will defend you when you sleep, when you walk. The same way you have immune system. Immune system fights for you. Even if you don't realize it, you can be doing completely other stuff and the immune system constantly fights for you. It's in you. I believe the shield of faith, trust in what Jesus said, making up your mind that God protects me. His promise guarantees that and nothing will happen that he did not allow. Now, does that mean that I'll never get criticized or people will not, people will always still understand and like me after I do this stuff? Of course not. But that's normal. We're promised persecution. So persecution is normal. But I'm talking about an assault of demons and curses. Those things we should never expect. We should expect God's protection, favor, and blessing. And we should thank Him for that and throw away traditional teaching and accept the words in red, the words of Jesus. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what are, what are some of the traditions you have believed that maybe are not true in God's word. Did you believe this before? Has this video made a change? Are you going to go into that verse now and reread it so you can renew your mind? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video. Share it with your friends, your family, and social media. And as well, don't forget to subscribe. Until next time.